Hello, my name is Antonio Sanchez, and welcome to Virtual Lomar. In the fall of 2011, I began a project working with a team of fellow students as virtual curators to recreate the entirety of Lomar Sculpture Park within the virtual world of Minecraft. Using U.S. geographical data, our leader, Professor Dave Darrington, was able to import the map directly into Minecraft so that most of the park's layout was accurate from the outset. Then it was up to the VCs to build each individual sculpture, structure, and building out of the different materials available for use within Minecraft. Now, a year later, we welcome you back for a tour of Virtual Lomar, a digital reconstruction of the Lomar Sculpture Park. Along the way, we'll see the sculptures in-game and discuss both what they're made of in the real world and briefly discuss how they were created within the game world. So, if you're ready, let's begin. So let's begin our tour, tour of Virtual Lomar. On our way up to the building, we come across the first of the Virtual Curator's work, House of the Minotaur. This sculpture was created by Tony Rosenthal in 1980 and alludes to his desire for art to be participatory by being shaped like a small labyrinth that visitors may actually walk through. Coming up on our left is one of the first buildings in Lomar. Even the bathrooms have been recreated just for the extra bit of detail. Immediately preceding the entrance to the gallery, we have an area with the work of Judas Shea. While it's hard to see from the ground, the garden area here is shaped like a heart. This is called the American Heartland Garden. In fact, let's see it a little better. See? Kind of looks like a heart, doesn't it? Now that that break from reality is over, let's take a moment to look at the central statue, Public Goddess. Like its real-life counterpart, Public Goddess is encased within a fence even inside of the video game. Next, we have the entryway into Lomar's main building. This arch actually holds a work itself called Lomar You Me Um. This neon sign, which changes color, was designed by Terry Allen in 1998 under commission for the Lomar Sculpture Park. Its flashing neon colors invite patrons and visitors into the charming building with the downtown vibe not usually reserved for art galleries. Now we're walking through the main gallery of the Lomar Sculpture Park. This estate originally belonged to Henry and Matilda Lomar. In 1977, the park was officially incorporated and has grown, grown from 72 acres to 105 acres. This area served as our main base of operations during the construction of Virtual Lomar. We would start here and spread out, filling in the rest of the park. As we exit through the back of the museum, we come upon a small enclosed pond which encircles Aurelia Roma, an Italian marble sculpture by Manuel Neri. Created in 1994, this piece reflects ancient Greek and Roman statues, yet brings something new as it is intentionally ruined by the skillful application of pock marks and incisions. The Minecraft recreation evokes the feel of a marble statue before it has been carved. Now to our right we see, no pun intended, I by Tony Tassett. Modeled on his own visual organ, I looks out over the park constantly and is easily one of the most recognizable sculptures in the park, whether in the real world or in virtual Loma. Here we come upon Marc de Suvero's Bornibus, made between 1985 and 1987. It towers over us in-game and also offers us one of the first opportunities to do, to do something you cannot do in the actual park. Climb on the sculptures! Look at that, you can climb right up it. Lomar does not allow people 
to get on top of sculptures for fear of damage to them. Virtual Lohmeyer, however, does not need to be as cautious in its restrictions. Simply keeping people from being able to outright destroy the sculptures is fine. Now let's get down from here and move on. Lastly in our main area and in the distance is yet another De Severo work, the monumental Destino. This humongous sculpture uses industrial steel to create a balanced yet precarious looking work of art. Ricardo Cat, built in 1999, is one of the most eclectic and enjoyable pieces in the park. Acting as a work of art, shelter, seating, and so much more. Mickey de St. Files' piece evokes a playful yet dangerous feel to it. The assortment of materials, colors, and inspirations combined in the work only add to its charm and mystique. This next work of art is Eclipse by Charles Arnoldi. It was created in 1990 and consists of two elongated ovals which have been hollowed out and decorated with trails created by the artist's fingers. Here we see La Libellule from the artist Armand, a.k.a. Armand P. Fernandez. This work was created in 1996 from the combination of a bronze statue and propeller blades. This is the one of the more abstracted pieces in Virtual Lomar, as the blocky nature of Minecraft doesn't allow us to recreate the sumptuous forms expressed in Armand's work. Now, moving on, we'll backtrack through the area with Public Goddess by Judith Shea to get to our next piece. Ernest Trove's works, such as Falling Man, seen here from 1969, are some of the oldest works in the park and date to his generous gift of a multitude of pieces to the park in the 70s. Falling Man is meant to represent the hard reality of life, as the sculpture has no face or arms and yet remains ever vigilant in its place. Outside the gallery again, and to the right of Aurelia Roma, is Cross Form by John Mason, built between 1962 and 1963. Twit's right is Twins, created by Joseph Hazel in 2007. Twins is an ambiguous sculpture created from the unlikely material of bedsheets. Not just regular bedsheets, though. These sheets have been cast in wax and bronze so that they stand unaided, connected by a knot tied in them. Farther out in front of the gallery, we have Steve Tobin's Walking Roots from 2002. It seeks to replicate the vast and complex network of roots and tangles beneath the surface of a tree. Tobin modeled it after the roots of a tree he himself had dug up and worked with an archaeologist in recreating the roots here in the same manner as the natural ones. Here we come to a piece which I worked on, Donut Number no. 3 by Fletcher Benton from 2002. This work combines many simple geometric forms into a masterwork of balance and irregularity. Now I must admit, this was one of the more difficult sculptures I worked on, as it was also one of the earliest. I resized it multiple times as the scale was way off the first time, ending up much larger than even the way in sheer size. Coming up is one of the sculptures I myself worked to help build within Minecraft. Cube Squared, created by Gerald Jacquard in 1969 and located on the nature trails, is an interesting sculpture for many reasons. It has many different areas of apparent movement, going up or down or to the side, and is supported by narrow beams. These beams almost give the effect of the sculpture floating off the ground, which was an aspect we originally went for in the recreation before deciding it didn't quite replicate the feel of the work the same way in-game. Down below us, we have the Way, located in, appropriately enough, Way Field. It is an immense structure composed of 18 oil tankers painted cadmium red, arranged to resemble an ancient temple. The Way holds a majestic air to it. 
This is by far one of the largest and most recognizable sculptures within Lomar. And it was created by Alexander Lieberman between 1972 and 1980. Triangular Bridge Over Water is one of the best reproductions of any sculpture in the park. Not only were the VCs able to match the exact materials, i.e. glass, but they also added running water under it to fully immerse virtual Lomar explorers. It was created by Dan Graham in 1990. Well, this concludes our tour of the Virtual Lomar Sculpture Park. I hope you enjoyed your time as much as I have. It was great leading you on this tour, going through all the different sculptures that were recreated for this. It took a lot of hard work by all of us, so we really appreciate you spending your time here to watch it. Thank you, and have a great day!